On the hilly sides of Ikegosi Ekiti is spread a beautiful but historic place, the site of the first air crash in Nigeria. Most people who know Ikegosi or have read about it, identify the sleepy town in Ekiti state with only one thing, a natural phenomenon, the warm and cold spring. The town is, however, a witness to world history in a way many don't even dream of. In fact, it harbors one of the greatest treasures of the nation's history in the aviation sector. Ikegosi, it was, where Nigeria experienced her first plane crash. It was a victim of international disaster precipitated by the Second World War. How did this happen? On Sunday 12th of April, 1942 at about 8.15 p.m., the agrarian town entered yet another phase in the history of life. It was the day one of the cargo planes used to ferry the war's deadly munitions crashed on a hill within its territorial circumferences. That hill is today known as Igbo Balu or Igbo Aeroplane that is the forest of aeroplane. The Igbo Aeroplane's story is one that the town and its children rarely pontificate to the outside world but which nearly all of them know. What exactly transpired on the said date many years ago and how did the Ilapa Hill come to be referred to as Igbo Balu? Igbo being forest and Balu, aeroplane. The monarch of the town, Anikagosi of Ikagosi Obai Lajuabio Duno Lorunish Hola, dared reveal his domain's open secret to the press. But to really do this, Oba Olorunish Hola, raised a two-man team made up of Mr. Oluadanijai, a retired school principal, whose father and grandfather played prominent roles at preserving the story and sight of the crashed plane. The other person is Gbengoa Duwal, a former councillor, and one of the youth leaders in the town. It is not accessible by road. We have to park under the car and walk for about one and a half hours, most of it climbing the hill, he said pointing to the highest hill around the town. It is the Ilapa Hill which is over 675 meters high. Adonijai an indigene of the town and graduate of history at the University of Ife now Obfemi Walawo University, armed with his double-barreled gun led the way. He told the chilling story of the etymology of Igbo Balu. My father, Baba Ogunkoyo, the second in command to the monarch, was a Nifar worshipper. On the morning of 5th of April, 1942, he woke up as usual to consult the Ifar oracle. In his divination, he read that danger loomed on Ikegosi and that something which had never occurred in Ekiti would happen and that it would affect Ikegosi in particular. He informed some elders of his finding. And as it was the period of World War II, different thoughts occupied their minds, various options were proffered. Would the war start in Ikegosi? Would the town be invaded by enemy or occupied by others? Would it be consumed by fire as almost all the houses then were of thatched roofs? As the guesses of what could happen raged on, another traditional chief told Ogunkoyo that rather than waste time ruminating on what the disaster could be, he should appease the gods and ask for the solution. So. Ifi instructed them that in order to divert the looming danger, a big dog should be fetched as quickly as possible, tied on the neck and specially prepared with certain incantations. It should then be dragged round the town and buried far away from where the people live possibly on a hill. And that exactly was what the elders did. And exactly seven days later, at about 8.15 p.m. on Sunday 12th of April, 1942, a heavy deafening sound was heard from the Isle Arpa Hill accompanied by a thick wildfire and smoke. It was a day pandemonium gripped the town. The people were terrified. Nobody was actually sure of what it was. This was more so because loud bangs of explosion continued to reverberate from the hill till dawn. However, the following day, 
the people now gathered and decided to investigate what actually happened on the Ilapa Hill. The expedition to the hilltop was spearheaded by one Sergeant Adalik, a native of Emma who resided here, Igagosi, accompanied by some elders, hunters and the brave ones. What happened was very obvious from afar. Lo and behold, it was a replica of the biblical burning but this time the fire was consuming the bush. The inferno raging on the hill was so severe that they could not move closer. They descended to tell the whole town which had gathered at the palace what they saw. The pilot should be commended, I think he manipulated the cargo up to the hill to prevent it from landing in the town because if eventually it had fallen within the town, it would have been the end of Ikegosi because I assumed that the speed with which it would run through the town would have destroyed many houses and people including all the animals taken into cognizance that the houses were of thatch roof. For almost five years, nothing grew on the top of the hill. The thick forest was devastated and remained barren. This was a rich forest hitherto populated by monkeys, antelopes, baboons, water hog, buffaloes and other exotic fauna. After the incident people started going the to carry part of the relics. I remember that in 1960, I was there to pick my own share and my father picked his too. This site was called Igbo Ilapa then and after the incident it was changed to Igbo Aeroplane, we don't do any rituals on the hill, our hunters only venture here for games and there were big animals here before the incident. This is where my father killed a buffalo 1939. Adonijai deployed his experience as a professional teacher in telling us the story about the incident so well that the journalists never realized that they were walking up to over 675 meters above the sea level, burrowing through the rich vegetation and forest, having a panoramic view of the surrounding towns and villages, hearing the insects ranting and the chirpings of the birds. The team got to the top of the hill after a walk of about one hour. They took off at 1.30 p.m. and got to the site at 2.27. At the central portion of the hilltop where it seemed that one could actually touch the sky as it looked closer lies parts of the wreckage of the cargo plane, the remnants of what could not be carried away by the people. The testimony of a disaster that could have wiped out the whole Ikegosi town had it been the plane crashed in the community. Lying there and covered with tall, wild brushes are two big rusted engines with thirteen pistons holes. After a combing of the Igbo Balu, looking to find some other parts and locating some which have now been preserved for posterity. It was time to depart and the begun the descent from the hill while Adnejai and Adyuwal could not stop their many remarkable tales about the town.